in the village of Pantai Norasing, Samutsakon Province, Thailand, the livelihoods of villagers revolve around fishing-related activities like fishing and mussel farming. There are many seafood restaurants in the area for tourists to eat while watching nature and relaxing. As it is only about an hour drive from Bangkok, Pantai Norasing has become a popular destination for those who reside in Bangkok for a short getaway from the bus of the metropolitan city. Just like most of Thailand's coastal zone, Pantai Norasing coastal lines are covered by rich mangrove forests that support a vital ecosystem. The mangrove system provides food for the local people and nutrients to the surrounding seas. These forests also act like a green wall and reduces coastal erosion and the effects of heavy waves and strong winds. The Wild Encounter Thailand worked together with the Agritourism Center Pantai Norasing Samut Sakon in conjunction with the Department of Marine and Coastal Resources to map out the marine lives found in the upper gulf of Thailand such as Brutus whales, Irrawaddy dolphins, Indo-Pacific finless porpoise and the rare pink dolphins by supplying photos and information that they gather in the ocean on their tourist boat trips. These photos help the authorities to keep a catalog on some of the marine lives in the upper Gulf region. Photo ID is a very useful tool to learn about social structure, population size, species range, aging individuals, social interactions, and site fidelity. Site fidelity describes an area where individuals frequently visit. There are currently around 17 known whales in the upper gulf of Thailand. The trip costs 2,000 baht per person, including delicious breakfast and lunch. The ship leaves from their pier near Bangkuntian district, about 45 kilometers off Bangkok downtown. I have included the location at the description below. We board at 8 a.m. and expect to return by 4 p.m. And the tour provider claims that there is a 90% chance of whale sighting during the high season of May to December. But in the case of no sighting, the tourists are invited back for a free trip until they get to experience it. To avoid alarming or stressing the animals, throughout the trip, the boat driver keeps a respectful distance but follows them and pulls the boat head on regularly so the passengers can get a good view. So, take anti-sickness pill, relax and enjoy the ride.
The boat went as far as 8.5 kilometers offshore, and the whales were sighted at 7 kilometer offshore. The main attraction that is offered by Wild Encounters Thailand is the Brutus whales. Brutus whales are named after Johan Brude, a Norwegian who built the first whaling stations in South Africa in the early 20th century. Although small by whale standards, it is nevertheless a large marine creature and measures around 11 to 12 meters on average. Brutus whales are usually seen alone or in pairs. They dive for about 5 to 15 minutes with a maximum dive duration of 20 minutes. Brutus whales are found in warm temperate oceans including the Atlantic, Indian and Pacific. Some populations of Brutus whales migrate with the season, moving away from the equator during the summer and towards the equator during the winter. Other populations of British whales are residents, meaning that they do not migrate. Unlike other roar calls, which have a single ridge on their rostrum, Brutus whales have three prominent ridges in front of their blue hole. Their bodies are sleek and their flippers are slender and pointed. The head of Brutus whale makes up about one quarter of its entire body length. The primary way that these whales feed is known as bubble feeding. British whales can blow water 3 to 4 meters into the air when at water's surface. They use their blowholes to send these massive bubbles of air up to the surface of the water, forcing any anchovies in that direct area upward. When a large school of these fish is located near the surface of the water, the whales will then rise up with their mouth open and take in a mouthful of them. This method is particularly effective for the whales to consume the food they need to survive, but it also benefits other species as well. Marine birds will often be seen whenever groups of whales are feeding, simply taking advantage of the fact that the whale's feeding technique provides such an abundance in their favorite food. Thread water feeding is another observed technique among British whales in the Gulf of Thailand. It is considered passive feeding because the whales do not swim forward in pursuit of prey. And although they need thrust force to stabilize their posture, the head does not actively move. This discovery of 
thread water feeding in British Wales represent the first report of passive feeding in Berlin Wales, which indicate their flexible capacity to modify their foraging strategy in relation to variable environments. The adoption of this behavior at this location might be owing to the oceanographic characteristics and the behavior of the prey species. There are five rivers which empty into the upper gulf of Thailand, carrying a considerable outflow of nutrients into the sea. The nutrients cause eutrophication, encouraging the growth of algae and lowering the dissolved oxygen level, especially during the rainy season. This eutrophication may limit prey species to the water surface where oxygen is more abundant. Therefore, British whales need to target prey close to the sea surface. As the whale treads water, the corners between the upper and lower jaws are slightly below the water line, causing water to flow into the mouth. Many anchovies in the targeted shoal appear to lose orientation and flow passively with the current into the mouth of the whale. This behavior is considered efficient for catching prey at the sea surface. Calves might learn tread water feeding by imitating adults. Because imitation is an important aspect of social learning, the tread water feeding of the adult calf pair implies social learning. Cultures are group typical behavior pattern shared by members of a community that rely on socially learned and transmitted information. Because tread water feeding has never been observed in British whales in any other areas, and the whales show a group typical behavior pattern in the upper gulf of Thailand, this feeding pattern might be a cultural behavior. PM concludes our hunt for the whales and we started heading back to the pier.
Pirates are often spotted following ships. When the ship sails forward, it encounters resistance and generates strong upward air currents. The seagull will follow the ship and lift its body with the help of this powerful upward air current. It can fly easily even without flapping its wings desperately. In addition to flying with the help of the airflow on the ship, the water wake of the ship often reveals food opportunity. When the boat is sailing, there will be a lot of waves. The small fish living on the bottom will be disoriented by the waves from the boat. Seagulls are birds with strong eyesight and will easily find the target and eat the fish. As we approach the shore, we can see a lot of bamboo sticks in the area. These are the mussel farms. Bamboo sticks are pitched in the sea and left there for three months in order to let baby mussels cling. Having got the desired amount of baby mussels, the mussels are now separated and placed on more bamboo sticks, giving them more room to grow. It takes about seven to eight months to grow to a good size to harvest. This concludes today's journey. Thank you for joining me and see you next time.